just what is the spiritual meaning of familiar spirits often used in the Old Testament and how it applies to the church today. This is part 15 of the Occult in the Church Today series. We're working through a series on the occult because the occult is talked about a lot in the Bible. It means to have secret or hidden knowledge and power. It's mystical. It relies on oneself. It's inherently prideful because it takes a certain person with special skills to be able to understand it and use the occult because it's mystical. It's hidden. It's a very prideful uh, thing to do where Christians rely on the Bible. The Bible is the sum of truth and the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit that resides in every Christian. But we find that the occult practices are in the church today. We're looking at that in this series. Please consider subscribing to this channel. There's a little red button in the bottom right hand corner. We find very easily in the Bible that those who had familiar spirits were not to be followed. We find first in Leviticus 20, a man also or woman that has a familiar spirit or that is a wizard, they shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones. To be a person that practiced that, having a familiar spirit, was the penalty was death. So Leviticus 20, the soul that turns after such as have familiar spirits, people that followed them or went to them, God will set his face against that soul, will cut him off. Leviticus 19, regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. People go to familiar, people with familiar spirits and wizards for information, for spiritual advice. A familiar spirit in the Hebrew is simply the Hebrew word ab. Literally means to mumble. It's used 17 times in the Old Testament. 11 times it's used, it's in the same verses as wizard. It's closely connected to wizard, and we're going to look at that. But both wizards and those with familiar spirits, they convey false spiritual advice. People want to go, and like a wizard today is like a psychologist. They want advice. They want information. We see in Isaiah 8, 9, 19, when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? Why in the world would we go seek for these worldly people when we have thousands of pages in the Bible? Okay, so let's now drill down what exactly is a familiar spirit. Now, King Saul, the first king of Israel, wrongly thought that a, a person with a familiar spirit could raise the dead. dead. He, he said in 1 Samuel 28, Seek me a woman that has a familiar spirit that I might go to her and inquire of her. He wanted to inquire. Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment. He went because he was ashamed. And anyway, came to the woman by night. Then said the woman, Who shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel. And we note in the passage that she didn't do anything at all. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice, but she was afraid. She was surprised. She was very disturbed because that's not what she expected. Normally she would deal with her familiar spirit, which is, as we're going to find out, a demon. And she could pretend it's Samuel. But she actually saw Samuel, which was a very unique miracle of God, which we're going to actually look in the next video on the Witch of Endor. We know that raising a dead person is not what it is to have a familiar spirit. We see that because we have other passages in the Bible that say the unsaved dead are dead. They can't interact any longer. Notice Job 7, as a cloud is consumed and vanishes away, so he that goes down to the grave shall come up no more. You can't raise the dead. That's blasphemous. That, that's, that's another salvation plan. He shall return no more to his house, neither shall his place know him anymore. Psalm 88, I am counted like them which go down to the pit, like the slain that lie in the grave, whom you remember no more. You have put away mine acquaintance far from me. I am shut up and I cannot come forth. A person with a familiar spirit is not somebody that actually raises the dead. And we're gonna, again, we're gonna look at that more in our next video. And also the Lazarus and the rich man, we see in that passage that, that, that the rich man could not go back and warn his living brethren either. We also see that the unsaved dead know nothing. The living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. 
Neither have they any more reward. Their love, their hatred, their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more portion forever in anything that's done under the sun. We're going to do a whole video on seeking after the dead coming up in this series. But for now, it's important to understand the unsaved dead are put away. They're in a place of silence. They know nothing. Ecclesiastes 9.10, there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave. Where will you go? His breath goes forth. He returns to the earth. In that very day, his thoughts perish. An important passage to help us understand what a familiar spirit is, is that they come from the ground. We, we have a passage in Isaiah 29 that concerns judgment on Jerusalem. And note how many times the word down and ground and dust occur in this passage. You shall be brought down and shall speak out of the ground. Your speech shall be low out of the dust. Your voice shall be as one that has a familiar spirit. Out of the ground. It's where the voice of the familiar spirit comes. It's out of the ground. And we know it's not dead humans, but it's something that comes from the ground. And your speech shall whisper out of the dust. Ground, literally, in the Hebrew, it's the word for the earth. It's where humans reside. The dust is where humans come from and where they return to. Dust to dust, Genesis 3.19. We see in Revelation 12 that the demons were cast to the ground, to the earth. His tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, which, which is a symbol for the demonic, uh, the demonic angels or demons. And he cast them to the earth. That word earth there is translated as earth or land or soil. The ground. They were put to the earth. They have no longer have access to heaven. Now, demons were relatively rare in the Old Testament, but we did see demonic activity. But here they're cast to the earth in mass, which points to the fact that there was heightened demonic activity after Jesus Christ's first advent. They were cast to the earth prior to his advent. And then after, after Christ was there, there's all type of demonic activity talked about in the Gospels and the Book of Acts. And that plays into even more demonic activity that we see in the New Testament and is going on in the church today. Okay, so when we look at evil spirits and demons in the Old Testament, we don't find a lot of information. But we do see at times that Saul was involved or possessed with an evil spirit. 1 Samuel 16, 14, the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and the evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. He had problems with evil spirits. Evil king Ahab's prophets. Now therefore, behold, the Lord has put a lion spirit in the mouth of all of these, your prophets. And the Lord has spoken evil concerning you. And we see that, that, that a lion spirit, which would be an evil spirit, we see also in the New Testament that demons are called evil spirits. And you can see that in Matthew 8 and Luke 8. Another important verse to really pinpoint familiar spirits as something that comes from the earth. We see the, the Hebrew word ab, it occurs 17 times. 16 times it's, it's interpreted as a familiar spirit. Only once though it's interpreted as a bottle. Like a bottle. And we see that in Job 32. Behold, my belly or stomach is as wine which has no vent. It is ready to burst like new bottles. So the belly there, or the stomach, also translated as womb some places, it's like a bottle. It's like a bottle. And we see this same uh, I, concept of belly referring to hell. We see that in Matthew 12, 40. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The heart of the earth was pointing to the grave. It was pointing to Hades when Christ suffered his passion. And he died and his, his spirit went to God, but his soul went to Hades for three, day, for three days and three nights. So we, when we relate that, where are demons today? Demons are in hell. We see this is a parallel passage, 2 Peter 2, 4. God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down, there's that word down again, to hell. And delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Hell, it's a deep abyss. It's symbolic for a place of being under the wrath of God or being under judgment. So when we look at familiar spirits, we have very strong evidence from the Bible 
and all the occurrences of Ab that they're talking about demons. A, a familiar spirit is a demon that this a person would use a demon to get spiritual advice. So when we relate that, and we know there's many demons talked about during the time of Christ and the apostles, but when we look at the purpose of demons today, which we're going to do on the upcoming slides, their purpose is to, to teach idolatry and bring false teaching into the church, false teaching about the Bible. So now when we go back and look at the passage about the quote-unquote witch of Endor, or the better stated, the medium of Endor, she's actually a mistress of a spirit. Look at 1 Samuel 28, verse 7. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that has. That word has there, she has a familiar spirit. That word has there is not the typical word that would normally translate has. It's the Hebrew word uh, bala. It's baalah. Bala. Literally, it's used in the Bible as a mistress. So this, the witch of Endor is really a mistress or the Lord of, of a familiar spirit. And the Young's literal translation of the Bible actually says that she's possessing. She's possessing a spirit. In other words, she's possessed. She's possessed by a demon, or a demon that's her, her spirit. Familiar spirit is actually a very good translation of what's being discussed here. It's a demon that this person is associated with. And she, this, this, so the witch of Endor is not really a witch. She doesn't practice witchcraft or sorcery because that's a different Hebrew word, kasaf. She's actually a medium. She, she's possessed. Okay, so now let's, let's pivot a little bit and look at, look at familiar spirits as demons and how are demons used in the church and parachurches today. During the time of Christ and during the time of the apostles, there was a lot of demon possession. They were, for various reasons, they were involved with people that, that, that Christ encountered or that the apostles encountered. And they're a symbol. And we have other studies on demons and demon possession, which I'll tag on this video. But we're going to try to look at what the Bible says, mostly in the New Testament, about what demons, what their real purpose is. Okay, first we see that demons are very closely connected with idolatry. In the passage in 1 Corinthians 10, the context is that we are to flee from idolatry. And when we pick it up in verse 19, the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils. That word devils there in the Greek is literally the word for demons. They sacrifice to demons. When people worship other gods and idols, they're really worshiping demons and not to God. I would not that you should have fellowship with demons or devils. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot be part of the takers of the Lord's table and the table of demons. Demonic idolatry. It's demonic. Demons operate in this world to promote idolatry. They, they take people's attention away from God. They put it on the things of the world. All this idolatrous things that we see all around us in the world. We see also in the Old Testament that offerings that were made to idols were actually, it was, it's also said in the Old Testament they had fellowship with demons. And you can find that in Leviticus 17.7 and Deuteronomy 32. So we see that when one practice idolatry, they're actually having fellowship with demonic activity. So idolatry today, how do we worship and offer things to idol? Well, we spend our time and resources loving this world. We have to remember that demons are angels. They're angels or messengers of Satan. Satan is the god of this world. His minions, his messengers get out the message of Worship my world. Worship idolatry. Satan is the god of this world, and the love of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but of the world. And Satan is the god of this world. And his demons are out there promoting idolatry. And when it creeps into the church, which it does, these people go to church and they, 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 they bring other ideas and all type of other loves in the, into the church, and it's very little Bible teaching. It becomes very idolatrous. We also see 
They're seducing spirits in the church. These familiar spirits, someone possessing a familiar spirit, will enter into the church. In the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. Seducing spirits. Well, that spirit's not an angel, a good angel. That's a demon. And doctrines of, you guessed it, demons. That word again there, devils. In the Greek, it's demonia, which really means demons. There's doctrines of demons in the church today. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. They teach that it's okay to live like the world, but you can still be a Christian. That's demonic. They teach that you can just make a decision that, that everybody can be saved and it doesn't matter how you act. That's demonic. A free will gospel is demonic. False prophecy is demonic. 2 Corinthians 11. If he, somebody who comes into the church, breaches another Jesus, or if you receive another spirit or another gospel, for such are false apostles. Even at the, t the time of the apostles, there were false apostles. Deceitful workers. They're, they transform themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. The things of the world can look very positive. Satan can appear very good. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers be also transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Demonic influence right in the church. People that come in the church and they're preaching all type of wrong doctrine. And they're allowing for worldliness in the church and there's no church discipline. That is all demonic activity. Demonic influence in the church continued. Revelation 18, again, Babylon is symbolic of false churches and parachurches. He cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great has fallen, has fallen. It's become the habitation of devils. Again, it's the Greek word for demons. Babylon has demons in it. The demons mainly reside in the churches today. And the parachurch is in the hold of every foul spirit in a cage of un every unclean and hateful bird. Because they, they throw up, they should know better in the church, and yet they don't. They, they bring other ideas, other gods and idols into the church. They're spiritually drunk. They're spiritually fornicating. James 3, if you have bitter envy and strife in your heart's glory, not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descends, descends not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish, demonic. Where envy and strife is, there's confusion in every work. That's where Satan dwells. And this is talking about activities in the church. There's all type of infighting in the church. There's all type of, of hard-handed hard activities going on. There's a lot of worldly politics in the church. The spirit of Antichrist believe not every spirit. Try the spirits of, their, of God. Many false prophets have gone into the world. Note the word many. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ, Christ means he's the anointed one, he's the prophet, the priest and king. He's the only, he's the word of God. He's the only way to salvation and he must be obeyed and we don't follow the world. We follow Christ. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And many people don't really believe in that threefold ministry of Christ. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God, but that's the spirit of Antichrist. But it's all about whether Jesus is Christ. How often you say, say hear people just talk about Jesus? Don't forget the Christ part, because that's the important part, because that points to the fact that he's God. He's the prophet. He's the word of God. He's the priest. He's the only way to salvation, and he's the king. He must be obeyed. The word of God must be obeyed. Okay, we also see uh, Paul had a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, the angel, that word messenger there, by the way, is angel, to buffet me lest I should be exalted above measure. And in other words, God allowed this messenger or this demon to keep the apostle from being prideful. He was buffeted. He was held back. He was, he, he was stood in the way, if you will. And the thorn in the flesh, when we look at that elsewhere in the Bible, it refers to unsaved people. There's people that come into our path, and, and for all we know, they're, they're demonic-influenced people that are keeping us from away from Christ. Just a quick summary of this video about familiar spirits. Familiar spirits are demons. They're demons. It's a person that has demonic influence that's, that's promoting idolatry and false teaching, especially in the churches and parachurches. 
the medium of Endor or the witch of Endor was the mistress. She had or possessed a demon. She wasn't raising the dead. And we're going to look at her more in the next video. But the demons, we see they're related to the earth. They were fallen. They were cast to the earth. It's not humans. Familiar spirits are not humans coming back from the dead because the dead are dead. They will be raised on Judgment Day or uh, saved humans are with Christ. But they're demons, demons that are fallen. Demons are very, very, very active today in this world. In false churches and parachurches are promoting false teaching. They're promoting idolatry in the, the, the false Christian church. We're going to go on to the next video. We're actually going to look at that medium or that witch of Endor in the next video. Please consider subscribing to this channel and thank you very much for watching this video.